Well, this is really a, a, a proof of concept to show that we can use technology like fMRI to communicate with patients who are behaviorally in, incapable of, of any form of response. So in the first instance, we, we asked very standard, specific questions about the patient that we could verify later on. And these were things that we didn't know at the time, such as his father's name, whether he had any brothers and sisters, these sorts of pieces of factual information, just to make sure that, that the technique was working. The two things here are that we can do it in real time and we can actually communicate instead of just determining whether a patient is consciously aware in some cases and I should emphasize it's, it's a minority of cases they can actually generate yes and no responses we are able to ask questions that might um, have some impact on their current state uh, of being so one can imagine asking a patient whether they are in any pain and using a simple yes no response to uh, to answer that and um, if appropriate, um, painkillers could, could be a administered. Um, I think, uh, again, it's, it's very early days and you know, the sorts of questions that we might be able to um, explore will have to be um, considered ver very carefully. But um, I think there are a number of ways in which we can uh, ask the patients about whether they would like to be involved in uh, possible therapeutic trials, for example, things that they normally wouldn't have uh, any involvement in because Previously, there's been no way for them to, to make a response. Um, I think we really uh, should be trying to um, scan as many of these patients a as we possibly can because I mean, this, this sort of study clearly shows that some patients, albeit you know, a minority, are being inappropriately diagnosed. So they're not getting a diagnosis that actually describes the situation that, that they're in. So even though behaviorally, neurologically, they might appear to be vegetative uh, in the scanner, um, we can tell that, that, that there's more going on. We know, uh, even from behavioral studies that have been conducted, that there's about a 40% misdiagnosis rate uh, in this patient group. What fMRI does is it gives us another tool. Um, at the moment, it's a scientific tool. I think in future it will become a standard medical tool that we can use to make sure that we get the diagnosis absolutely right in, in as many patients as we possibly can.